are going to come across to get our first gold medal of Mexico. The New Zealand Royal Gate wins the gold at Munich. For the gold medal here in the 1984 Olympic game. The New Zealanders, everything's aching now. Derek Verdonk heading for a bronze. Derek Verdonk for New Zealand, the double world champion. One gold at Denver Plates. New Zealand's getting in front. New Zealand have won us. It's black to gold. Gold and gold again for Caroline and Georgina and Swindon. New Zealand for bronze. America miss out. Head of operation there keeps gold. It'll be gold for New Zealand for Eric Murray and Hamish Bond. Bahe Drysdale, two-time Olympic champion. What a race from him. New Zealand, two-time Olympic champions. Great finish from New Zealand. To wear the silver fern and what it represents it makes you feel so much pride. It was one of the proudest moments I've ever had. Growing up when I was a kid, you know, representing New Zealand was like the ultimate goal. Like anybody that did it, were, I just thought were the coolest people. And so um, I always, I love the idea of ever being able to do that. And, and when I first got to in, in 2010, I just, it meant the world to me. It was, it's the, you know, the greatest honour to be able to represent your country. Suddenly bringing out the word New Zealand, <laughs> suddenly <laughs> you know, everybody went to Cirque and that's the first time we ever used those words, New Zealand, and uh, never used them in training, just suddenly brought them out and the boat just took off, it's just amazing, incredible feeling. Yeah. If I could wear the silver fern it would make me feel really accomplished and it would mean like a lot if I could do that when I was older. I still remember the first time I, I uh, got my humble um, New Zealand rowing shirt and I've still got it. It was an, an incredible feeling to be able to put that on. And then you look back in the grainy pictures of the people that um, have worn it before you and now wear it so proudly. It is our iconic, our, our iconic emblem and I feel very strongly about it and its, and its legacy and how each generation has to cherish it and take it forward and make it better. The silver fern's really special. I guess growing up it was something that I almost saw as quite like impossible, like it didn't seem realistic. So it seems a bit surreal. You can relate to people that rode for New Zealand like 50 years ago and now it's such, like it's a real community. I would say rowing New Zealand has had a massive cultural shift for me over the last 10 years. There's something that stood out for me since I got here is how special the kind of rowing family or community is. And I think that probably contributes to what you can make together as a squad. The culture of the place really is that everyone wants to achieve, um, but we do it We do it together and we do it well. The rowing community itself is like a family and it's positive, it's supportive, and I could not wish for my son to have chosen any other sport. The change in him was enormous. He, was, um, he lacked confidence, he lacked self-esteem, he's um, He's developed self-belief, um, he's developed a sense, of, a sense of purpose and he has grown into such an amazing human being. You get one of your rowers on the podium, you know, that's a, quite a defining moment in their lives and you know, we won a Māori Cup, boy I remember that. So if you can do those sorts of things for those boys then you know, that's bringing about a similar moment for them, it's quite important in their lives. One, Mother said to me once that her uh, boy went on to get into New Zealand University's crew and she thought rowing had been life changing for him. So you know, it's quite cool if you can be a part of bringing some of those things about. Yeah, probably two proudest moments, um, watching the under 23 lightweight women's double, um, watching them win gold and then uh, Brooke and Liv in the double in 2017 and 2018. Um, just those seasons, every time that crew went out and raced, uh, I was really, really proud to be part of uh, what they were doing and what they were achieving. It's when you watch their final race and you know all the ups and downs that they've gone through to get to where they are, because it's never, never plain sailing. Um, but just standing back and watching them kind of put it all out there and cross the line, that's, yeah, those are the moments you, you live for as a coach. Oh, 
I enjoyed the fact that when you're on the water, you can forget about anything else on land and you're just you and your crew in the boat. I love going out and finding different ways to attack different sessions and just find more speed every day and I suppose it's the competitive drive that keeps me in it. I love the team aspect about it. I quite enjoy uh, going up against my mates and going up against the rest of the world. I think rowing gives us a huge amount of resilience. The, the highs and lows of sport sets you up to be able to manage and control any situation, whether it be business, personal life, whatever the world or life throws at you. You know, having that resilience kind of tucked under your belt, uh, it's amazing when it starts to shine through and help you in other areas of your life. Rowing itself is really about unity and you've got to have everyone on the same page mentally, physically, technically and you've really got to be able to balance all those different factors and get everyone moving as one and when you get it, it's amazing. The boat just sings and yeah, when you're sitting up on the water, it's so special. High performance sport's tough, it's, it's hard, it's got to be results driven, it's got to be people turning themselves inside out. Those results and do the work that's needed, that's, that's probably what we learnt through the 2000s from Rob Waddell and the Twins and then up to the men's pair and Mahe and, and uh, Juliet and, and all of them. There are no shortcuts, uh, but I guess at the same time it doesn't mean that uh, you can't look after people well, make sure that everyone's kind of catered for and that people have that balance, um, both as athletes and uh, and coaches and support staff. I think one of the things that that keeps us all going through those dark days is knowing that the goal's coming to an end or you're almost there or that you can feel the success or failure of a, of a rowing session or a rowing race or a rowing stroke. You can break it down to feel the highs and lows and those highs are just so high that uh, you just want to keep going. The Elite Squad, you guys are great. We had a conversation with a few of you before the last board meeting. You know that I felt found that quite inspiring. I thought the um, the knowledge of that group was outstanding, and absolute embracing of the need to just work hard. So I, I came away from that feeling inspired by the rowers we have at the elite level. I was really comforted by. It. The sport of rowing is special. This is the case all over the world, in my own country, Ireland, and especially here in New Zealand, which I now call home. Rowing has made us who we are. It teaches us how to take the knocks. It teaches our kids that with hard work comes glory. But most of all, it honors our history. We are proud to wear the fern and to contribute to its legacy, and will continue to do so for generations to come.